Okay, so um, I just want to show you how to um, estimate a model that is nonlinear. And I already have the two file here, just an example. So if we're using the um, population survey data set for the year uh, 2008, and just in you know, order the, the first few lines you already know what is that so we first here we're creating a file that will um, that we will save all the results to so a log file is just our results file and then we ask data to get the data set from uh, this folder which is the state file that we have created and then this is the CSV uh, file it's always easier to create like the same name for everything uh, for sure the extension is going to be different so here log for the results this CSV for the uh, CSV file and this is the GTA if you would like to save everything to a data set uh, file that is saved under uh, state but you can always like skip this part uh, the set more of sometimes as I said uh, before sometimes you do not want to um, have the results displayed in um, you know, um, like you do not want to keep on pressing the word more, you just want the results to come all at once. So set more off, I prefer to do it so that I, you know, I don't keep on pressing the word more, more, more to get all the results. Uh, describe, you would like to describe the results, describe the data set, what are the types of the data that you have, and then summarize just a real summary, which is like the mean, the maximum, the minimum, which are basically statistical summary. Of course, as you can notice, the first line here is just a regular model. I mean a linear model, a regular I mean like a linear model uh, because everything is linear so AHE is an abbreviation for the average hourly earnings age and the gender uh, which is our binary variable that takes one for female, zero otherwise bachelor whether the parents are um, graduated with a bachelor degree or not uh, and again it's another dummy variable um, as I said many, many times, just make sure all the time that the abbreviations that you write here in your model are exactly the same as how they are written in the CSV file where, and the CSV file is actually taken from the author website. So just make sure that, uh, you know, the names that are right here are exactly the same way they are written on the CSV file. And then um, here, if you would like to create our first nonlinear model so if you would like to have a log linear model so a log in y linear in x you need first to generate the log variable so if i have average hourly income as just as a just a linear variable i can always change it into um, a log variable by generating comments so generate you can call it any name that you would like but I always prefer to call it something that I can remember so L H E is just the log of the average hourly income and make sure that everything that is after the uh, equal sign is basically what is uh, state should understand so everything that is before the equal sign which is not everything like in between the generate command and the equal sign is a name that you can call whatever you like so you can call it log ahe you can call it lh you can call it your name anything but just make sure that you want to call it something that you can remember and then once you generate here uh, so once you generate it here you should generate it in um, you know the name that you have just uh, called here i mean that you have just generated here and then uh, you can always have a log log model. In this case, you want to generate a log uh, age. So what you have here is generating log age, which is equal to log age. And then you have a regression that is log log. Uh, finally, you can also do a quadratic model. You need to generate age sq. Again, you can call it age square. You can call it your name. You can call it anything. But I prefer to call it something like usually I call square sq so generate hsq which is just h and this hat stands to the power of 2 and then you do your regression having the new variable where you have h and you have h square uh, because you know the h earning profile is known to be a quadratic model so you would like to test this and finally the last version of the model is that you want to try the third type of 
uh, nonlinear model, which is basically our interaction term. We have here two dummy variables. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we have here two, two dummy variables. We have female and we have bachelor, and we would like to have an interaction term for both. So you just generate an interaction term that is simply a multiplication of the two, and you added it here. So this would be like the direct effect of gender. This is the indirect effect of gender. This is the direct effect of education. This is the indirect effect of education. And then you simply run everything. So you just click on execute two, and you would, should be able to see all the results right here. Um, so because we set, we did set more of, so we, we got all the results all at once, which is what we basically want. So you have the description of the data set, you have the summary of the data set, which is the statistical summary of the data set, you have the just the regular linear model here, and here are all nonlinear models. So this is the, the log linear model. Make sure how to interpret this coefficient based on what you have studied. Make sure that this is just a linear in x, log in y. So our answer would be in terms of percentages, right? So this is a one uh, a one unit increase in age, and this could be like a unit in age is just one year increase in um, in age. It's gonna be like. 0.027327 multiplied times 100 and then you add the multiplication sign in other words a one year as the person gets one year older the aid the earning is going to increase approximately by 2.7 percent um, and then you can go ahead and just do the next one which is a log log model and this one is basically says that a 1%, because this is in log, a 1% increase in age implies 0.8, approximately 0.8% increase in average hourly income uh, earnings. And uh, if I do it in square, just make sure that you cannot just analyze this one, but because I have age is you know divided into two parts, then I have to take into my consideration the two parts before analyzing the effect of age. So the effect of age would be this coefficient in addition to this coefficient. Uh, this one is negative, but so it's going to be like this one minus this one, but usually combine the two, whether positive or negative. Um, and then uh, the, the interaction model. So this one would give me the effect if a person is uh, if the person interviewed is a female. Um, this interaction term is the indirect effect of gender. In other words, if I'm asking you um, what's going to be the average hourly income of a female, then definitely it's a negative. So that means that the average hourly income of a female would be less by 0 0.22 or 18.02 uh, dollars as compared to a male. And what if this female is educated with a bachelor degree then definitely we have a you know a positive effect here uh, that would minimize the negative impact of the gender here so in other words this is the direct effect of gender this is the indirect effect of gender if i'm asking you what's the effect of a female that is a four-year college that has a four years uh, college degree then in this case you would add this coefficient which is the negative 22 approximately to this coefficient which is 0.07 approximately and these two together combined would give us the effect of a female that is educated with a bachelor degree okay and this coefficient which is approximately 0.3 or 0.4 in this case uh, the effect of education of course it has positive effect on average hourly income right and this would give us the effect whether this person is a female or, or a male okay which is just a tiny little uh, uh, a difference tiny little difference okay so uh, okay so that's it for the nonlinear uh, models and um, just go over this one plus the um, the questions that you have on the assignment should uh, make you better understand the idea of nonlinear models